everybody, welcome back to another Kairos 101 tutorial. Uh, you may have been watching this series and wondering, what on earth is Kairos? Well, um, it's an IT IP platform provided by Panasonic, uh, sort of breaking the norm of things when it comes to vision mixing, uh, especially since it is centered around uh, new protocols with SMPTE 2110 specifically. Um, it's a GPU-based system rather than an FPGA card uh, design sort of thing, with you, which is what you have with, uh, say, Ross Carbonite or uh, ATEM, uh, like Blackmagic ATEM switchers, which are hardware switchers. This is sort of a hybrid effect of both software, like what we find in um, vMix or OBS, and with hardware switchers like we have with the Ross uh, Grass Valley and uh, Blackmagic line of things. What that allows for us is to utilize a uh, set of scenes rather than to think about things in mix effects layers and uh, DVEs, etc., and super sources. Um, this sort of breaks that mold, and now we can utilize things like scenes and think, be thinking about how we utilize scenes like we would compose a um, Photoshop sort of diagram to make like our multi, multi view boxes or, or multi boxes for a, a show or um, how we build out transitions with different layers. So things really start to change in terms of the way the philosophy is thought around how things are designed on a switcher um, rather than, you know, really being fixated on, you know, a certain number of frames being all allocated for, um, you know, our, our media playback. Now we have a hard drive that we can use to load in clips and assets and playback things. It really does become sort of a one-stop shop for a lot of different applications uh, when it comes to general video um, playback and switching. Um, so I mentioned, I mentioned some of the things about how it's GPU enabled. So it really, the software that's designed around Kairos is really used to expand upon what the capabilities it already has. It's like your Tesla where you can upgrade it over the air with updates on firmware and, and things like that. So you really enhance some of the, the, the special sort of uh, features that are included in, uh, in this mixer. One of the things that has come out since the first time I used this system back in November was the add of an audio mixer. So with an added license, we added an audio mixer. Now, um, rather than just reliant on de-embedding or embedding um, uh, downstream from a router. Uh, and, and in addition to that, it's also it's also pretty much signal agnostic. We can we can bring in streams. Uh, we can bring in like R RTMP streams. We can bring in SRT streams, NDI. We uh, can ha we can purchase uh, SDI. Uh, cards for the back of the device that plug right in so you can sort of use it like you would a traditional switcher and then on top of all that you also are able to use SMPTE 2110 which is what you're watching right now this is uh, really an an ST2110 signal um, that's generated in our multi-view for example that runs throughout our whole system so there's a separate network that we have that allows us to convert SDI signal that we have at full bandwidth into an IP stream that I can access very easily uh, through a router, which is all copper based into an IP stream onto this system. Now, you might be wondering, well, how many inputs do we have? Well, as per our uh, input settings here, we can see that we have um, 32 inputs. We have 24 channels of uh, ST2110 uh, ins. So, and if you do some of the math here, it's quad link for 4K. So we can do up to six 4K signals. So it's one per every four 3G inputs. But currently the configuration is um, 24 3G, up to 3G inputs. So 20, uh, 1080p 60, that is. Or we can do six 2160p 60 <laughs> inputs, um, which would allow us to do, you know, mix um, six you know, uh, 4K sources. In addition, we can also do two NDI inputs along with six streams. So without having to need, I can use this uh, system alone, the Kairos KC100, 
alone to bring in talent or bring in external sources that are being streamed to our location here in the MCR uh, without the need for ancillary equipment. As long as I have a stable internet connection, um, I'm good to go. And I can bring in ancillary equipment over NDI uh, like we're seeing here. Like I'm actually using the desktop capture um, on this computer that uses that's using the Kairos Creator software to capture and convert into an SDI signal to record this, uh, this program. So that's a little bit about inputs. In terms of the outputs, same sort of story. We can do, uh, we have up to 16 outputs that are licensed. We currently have 12 uh, SMPTE 2110 modules uh, in terms of IO. It's, a, it's a, a bit fewer than that, but we can do, uh, we can do, I believe three 4K outputs along with um, two stream outputs and two NDI outputs. So I can make NDI available to a vMix system or to a decoder or an encoder um, and be able to use that NDI and float it around our existing network and be able to stream out, say, a multi-view out to our, our SaaS uh, software, um, our, our, our uh, cloud service VVCR, so that I can, you know, I can give a multi-view to a producer who's remote and they can directly write off the switcher without having to go through one of our favorite Makito encoders, um, they can be able to watch uh, the stream of the multi-view that you see in front of you in real time, which is pretty great. And even furthermore, I can also encode, say, to a YouTuber at the switcher if I wanted to. So, um, you know, we've talked about some of these things before, but just to reiterate, we have those this stream as an option. So it's really amazing that, you know, we can use this IP IT platform, not only to think about it as a vision switcher, but it can also do so many more things like encoding, graphics playback, video playback, I mean, audio mixing. There are tons of extra features that typical switchers don't necessarily have when it comes to the hardware sort of side of things. Um, if you watch any of our series of videos, I think there are plenty of, of bits and bobs to take a look at, especially just looking at the, the menu settings on the desktop that's right in front of me. Um, that sort of says it all. I'd say that really does say a lot about what the system is capable of doing. That really takes a lot of what we love about vMix and sort of the flexibility that that system has and the hardware reliability that we've had with ATEM switchers and raw switchers in the past and be able to combine that into a, a, into a really contemporary system that serves the purpose of uh, a lot of our clients' needs. Um, last little bit I'll, I'll tease everybody with is uh, the Canvas license, which is really, really cool, especially for those that are into um, LED, uh, you know, LED walls or, or sort of unusual outside of the box uh, configurations when it comes to displays for events and stuff like that. A big part of that is being able to make to cr this. Unfortunately, we don't have this license on our system right now, but we can delegate certain outputs to be variable uh, variable resolution sizes. So if you have a uniquely sized LED wall that's like a 10 by one rather than a nine, uh, 16 by nine or even a 916, you can conform the way in which you think about or the way in which you can display video onto that without the need for like an ancillary software like your touch designer or, or some sort of like Resolume Arena in order to drive the system. So you can have that all based on your the switcher that you're using to make your regular program. So some of the biggest takeaway points about why this uh, platform is so impressive is its flexibility when it comes to inputs and outputs, uh, whether that be over SMPTE 2110, which is a future platform with cameras and other ancillary gear that's still coming to market, along with you know your more traditional SDI feeds that you can take in and out to hook up with your existing cameras, or even NDI, so you can even go to small scale sort of equipment where you have an NDI-enabled camera or a vMix system that's driving uh, graphics input over, over NDI. And even still, you can bring in sources uh, over streams. So whether that be an RTMP, RTSP, or SRT, this platform really has the capability to bring in any of those kinds of sources, no matter what the circumstances are. Lastly, I think the biggest part of this thing is the paradigm shift away from MEs and your, the traditional things we're used to with uh, video hardware switching, um, now thinking about how we can operate in scenes. Those scenes allow us to be able to compose uh, 
shows live uh, and to tape a little bit more fluidly, like we would with Photoshop or a software like vMix, but with the reliability of a hardware that is the Kairos KC100. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this Kairos 101 tutorial, and I'll see you guys on the next one.